Hello everyone, seeing everyone starting to join here. Get started in a few seconds. So I've got, I'm just here in my hitting bay. Got St. Andrews 18 on in the background there. That's a nice thing to think about. All right, so. Let's, uh, you know, the funny thing about social media, I learn a lot more from when I post something than anybody who's learning something from something that I've said. Because quite often I'll post something that's, that I think is fairly well known, fairly um, straightforward, and uh, that most golfers know. And then I get all of these responses like, wow, you know, I never knew this and blah, blah, blah. And then the funny one is when I post something, this is where I really learned something, is where I post something and all of the swing experts come out of the woodwork and call me stupid and tell me I have an inappropriate relationship with my mother and all that good stuff. That's when I really know that I've touched on something that a lot of golfers don't understand. So that's one of the things I'm going to talk about. And I'm going to open it up for questions as well. Um, uh, I have a video called Power Shift. And uh, if you're interested in getting it, it's going to go into detail on a lot of the, the good topics on how to shift and rotate correctly. Um, live Power, you get a big discount on it, 40% off if you want to, want to do that. But um, I've put something up on social media several times. Instagram, Facebook. Uh, TikTok, and I got so many negative responses, and I'm like, people do not understand what's going on here. So basically, what I say is, is that good golfers, elite golfers, move the right hip in the backswing, and the left hip in the downswing, and most amateurs move the left hip in the backswing and the right hip in the downswing, and then I. I literally get dozens and dozens and dozens of responses calling me stupid, saying the hips can't move independently. When you move one hip, you move the other one. And I understand those responses, but that's really one-dimensional thinking. And coincidentally, when I found these people's comments, if they have their golf swings on their pages, they all early extend and rotate and shift incorrectly because they do it the wrong way that I describe. So it's really, really important in order to have your best golf swing and even more importantly to protect your back that you understand this concept of right hip and left hip. So I'm going to reverse the camera and kind of go stand over there with the with a club. All right. So... Elite golfers move the right hip in the backswing to rotate. They move the left hip in the downswing to rotate. Amateurs mostly do the opposite. This has a wide range of effects on and the way the swing works. So if you get up here and you rotate your pelvis by moving your left hip, you're going to go like this. Look at how much sway I had this way. Then, in order to get to the left side and move my right hip to rotate, I've got to really lunge my pelvis toward the target. Now, here's why that's so important. When you move, here's the big part of this. When you move the left hip to rotate in the backswing, look at how it's making my pelvis move toward the ball. Okay? And then when I move my right hip in the downswing, I move my right hip toward my pelvis, toward the ball even more. I'm out on my toes. Early extension all day long. Left hip, right hip. I can't even keep my balance doing it in slow motion. However, if you do it the right way, right hip, left hip, in the backswing, you'll notice if you look at the overwhelming majority of elite players, especially the all-time greats, Tiger, Hogan, Nicholas, Sneed, 
they rotate their right hip behind them and get a little bit of an angle toward the target in their right hip. Whereas when you move the left hip, you're stuck on the right side with a vertical right leg. Here's why this is important. If you move your right hip back and around, you're starting to initiate, after the initial right shift, you're starting to initiate the shift into the left side. Now you don't have to slide to get to your left side, and you can just rotate the left hip back. Okay, and if we're looking at this from this angle, right hip back and toward the target, left hip back. Look at all this room, I maintain my spine angle, I don't early extend, all good. That is why it is super, super important that you understand this concept. And if you have the urge to still say, this is stupid, the right hip and left hip can't move independently, while technically true, when you do it the wrong way, you bring your center of your pelvis this way, both in the backswing and the downswing. When you do it the correct way, you keep the center of your pelvis back, your body rotates better and gives you much more room to hit the ball. This is an extremely misunderstood concept. And when I say over 95% of golfers who shoot par are better, do it the right way. Right hip, left hip. Over 95% of the golfers who shoot over 75, they do left hip, right hip. Left hip, right hip. Okay? Now there are always other factors involved in the swing. A lot of this happens because of club head movement and whatnot. But if you know the starting point is right hip, left hip, you're going to be really ahead of the game. So, like most concepts in the swing, this doesn't work in a vacuum. There are other factors involved, but you got to get this right. If you don't get this right, you're going to be struggling and you're going to be compensating and just struggling massively to understand if you do it the wrong way, you're not going to rotate properly. You're going to lose your tush line. Your arms are going to be stuck. The club head's going to come out. All sorts of bad. So learning this one simple concept of right hip in the backswing, left hip in the downswing. And again, I have a video called Power Shift. It goes into this in detail and drills to get it right. And some of the reasons why um, you can't, currently do this correctly. So, um, you know, I'm going to talk about some other stuff. Uh, if you have any questions right now, throw them in there and I'll see if I can answer some of them. Um, see if anybody has any questions. But again, there, there's almost, for those of us who lift the right heel in the backswing, can you provide a visual demonstration of turning into the right heel? Excellent. Okay. That is such a good question on this subject. Okay, so the right heel, I'm assuming right-handed golfer, and turning into the right heel. If you move your left hip out, you're going to be off balance and likely come off the right heel as well. However, if you're turning the right hip back in the backswing, and moving it away from the ball. Every great golfer is a little bit different, but these are good reference points. If you go right hip away from the ball till about left arm parallel, then as you turn to the top, the right hip is going toward the target slightly. So like if your butt was up against the wall, to left arm parallel, you're pushing the wall with your right cheek and then as you're going to the top, the right cheek slides along the wall toward the target. Um, the sad part is the overwhelming majority of golfers are going to sense proper pelvis rotation and late backswing shift into the left side is a reverse pivot. Obviously, if you go like this, that is in fact a reverse pivot. 
But if you watch all, most all of the great golfers, they go right, 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 right. And then somewhere in here, Rose kind of around left arm parallel, Tiger as well. Um, DeChambeau's a little earlier. Rory's very late. Rory's right, 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 left. But you can see that right cheek sliding along the wall toward the target. Getting the right hip back and toward the target, huge in getting into that right heel. All right, hopefully that answered your question. Any other questions? How do you keep your hands from going inside and around you when you turn your right hip back? Another excellent question. All right. were taught the cliche of the one piece takeaway where everything moves together okay and a lot of them have interpret that as hips too and their back swings end up looking like this okay or they'll roll the face behind them all right this is where passive this and passive that really, really destroys golfers. If you do it right already, you can be passive. People who say they have passive arms already accelerate their arms the correct way. People say that you're not supposed to use your hands and wrists in the takeaway, don't understand proper sequencing. So this is also in power shift. In elite golf swings, we all know, it goes hips, torso, arms, hands, club. Everybody knows that. What most people don't know is in the overwhelming majority of good players, the sequence is in reverse. Club head, hands, arms, chest, hips. In a good backswing, the club has the farthest to travel, the hips have the least amount. So you'll see people try to move everything together. Now my hips are maxed out, I have no wrist set, and it's all arms and hands on the way back. However, you can solve that problem and the problem of not getting the club inside when you turn your hips is the hips go last and the club goes first. So th this would obviously be an inside takeaway that nobody wants. Ray Floyd was good, but most of us would struggle from here. If all I do is get that earlier hinge in my wrist now I'm in perfect position. So that was the long answer. The short answer to your question is, if you're getting inside, an earlier vertical hinge is almost always part of the problem, if not the problem, and an early hip turn. See, that's why you wanna push. You don't go this way. You push, then you turn as you get to the top. All right, two good questions so far. Okay, so if I missed your question while I was doing this, please, please repeat it again. We'll see if I can't get to all of them. Let me see. I have a neutral to weak grip. Left overdraw is killing my game. Should I strengthen my grip? Another really good question. Um, I could answer this without even getting up there. Here's another big misconception. Is hooks happen when you close the face too much, okay? Yes, at impact, the face is too closed. However, the overwhelming majority of hooks hit by experienced and better players are because coming into impact, the club face is too open to something, to some variable, and your brain doesn't want to hit the ball way right and at the last second stalls out and flips it shut. So, the common fixes for, for hooks are swing more to the right, well that's gonna make the club more open to the target. Weaken the grip, that's gonna make the club more open to everything. 
hold the face off. That's going to keep the club open to everything. So getting back to your question, there's a very good chance that strengthening your grip slightly will help you not hit those hooks. Okay? I see a question here. Best way to exit left on the downswing. So these are the kinds of questions um, that golfers need to understand the proper answer. The exiting left on the downswing is step 27 in the swing. And if you're trying to solely do that, you're going to hit the ball worse. The answer to how to exit left is find the mistake in your swing that's not allowing you to exit properly and that's making you, your hands go up like this. There's one or more reasons why that's happening. It could be setup, it could be grip, it could be takeaway, it could be any number of things. You have to find that 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 issue. Uh, okay, another great question. How do you practice this when you're doing your smaller shots if you are using the top of your backswing to shift to your lead foot? When you're doing smaller shots, you shouldn't have a shift to the right. Like a pitch, a little 50 yard, 60 yard flighted L wedge. You're trying to punch seven iron out of the trees with a left arm parallel backswing and keep the ball low because you don't want to swing full. The answer is you get left, first move off the ball, like what you would consider a reverse pivot. Because the, the initial right shift off the ball is mostly to generate momentum and a lot of other things that I won't get into those rabbit holes. But that initial shift to the left is a power move. And when you're hitting smaller shots or half shots or flighted shots, you don't want that power move. You want to move left immediately and immediately go to that left foot so you can pretty much stop your swing at any point. You'll notice if you watch elite uh, golfers hit pitches, like little 20, 30, 40 foot pitches, you will absolutely see their head move toward the target in the backswing because they're trying to stay or get to the lead side earlier and more. So that, that's how you get that done. Good question. Um, my uh, EGD584, sorry, I haven't been saying your names. Uh, my chest tends to fly open. I end up dropping the hands under. What video or drill do you re recommend? Um, so that's a real. That's another really good question. So I'm I'm gonna get up to show you this one. So Jack Nicholas called it. Keep your back to the target. Justin Rose says stay closed until you come all the way down to here. That's the way elite golfers have described it. But the what, what's actually happening there is the golfers are staying in left tilt longer. So what you're describing is your shoulders open up and then your arms get trapped back here and you got one of these going. But so at the top of the swing, as you rotate, I'm tilted left toward the golf ball. And then at impact, you're tilted right toward the golf ball. So what you're describing is you're going from left tilt to right tilt too early. All right? So what you want to feel is, this won't be reality, but you want to feel your right shoulder stay high and your left shoulder stay low. Now, for golfers that had this move going when they first started, that's going to be the straight over the top, and they learned to drop it in the slot and swing the right field, which is the other problem. But for the problem you described, if you can just feel yourself staying left tilted longer, look at how that brings my underneath hands right into position. And you don't have to do it very long. You just got to do it for an extra split second. And uh, that will keep your shoulders from flying open. All right, let's see what else we got here. <laughs> uh, 
They're not frosted, Jeremy. Um, I'm just gray. Okay, Joe Novak 8. Does a hip bump toward the target at address encourage or help the right hip movement in the swing? It can. You just got to be careful you don't overdo it. You don't. You want slight spine tilt away from the target at address. Little, almost level and a little bit with wedges, a little more with driver. And you just got to be careful you don't bump your hips too far forward and create um, excess tilt. How does tempo factor into NTC, no turn cast? Another one of my videos. Um, from Matador New. Um, this is a blanket statement that I'm going to be right 90 to 95% of the time. The farther you get away from the hole, the faster you're, you need to speed your tempo up. My experience is, you know, 80 to 90% of golfers, especially with their longer clubs, have tempos that are way too slow and it's costing them power and proper sequencing. And I just had two people today. They're like, oh no, Monty, I wanna have, it. that's another uh, uh, subject that I got destroyed on, on social media by all the experts. I said, slow, smooth tempo is a myth. And uh, oh boy, um, if I would have taken personally some of the things that were said to me, <laughs> I would have had a really bad day. Um, forgot to switch the camera. Um, I'd had a really bad day if I took those those comments personally. Um, daily, I put people's golf swings up next to Ernie L's, Mr. Smooth, the Big Easy, and one of the guys I had today, you know, he's like, "No, Monty, I I need to have smooth tempo in order for my sequencing to work." And I'm like, "Yeah, you have it backwards, my friend." And I put his swing up next to Ernie L's. And this is not an exaggeration. Ernie was in his finish when this golfer was just past left arm parallel in the backswing. So you have two choices when your backswing tempo is too slow. Choice number one, you can have proper rhythm, which is what's important in a golf swing, tempo's irrelevant, and hit the ball nowhere. Or you can rush the transition to create speed and then your body won't un unwind correctly. And I prove it every single day. They're like, this can't be right. You know, everyone says you're supposed to have slow, smooth tempo, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I, I understand. But Monty, I get so quick. And I'm like, you're getting quick in transition because your back swing's so slow and your body's trying to get to the golf ball when you're going back in super slow-mo. Without exception, people gain 10 to 20% club head speed with no more effort when they speed up their backswings. And it's pretty cut and dry. And within two trips to the range when they get used to it, they, um, they uh, get used to it. Because it's, it's scary at first. Taking it to the course is scary at first. But tempo, that word needs to be thrown out of the lexicon in golf instruction. And um, rhythm is the proper word that needs to be used. You need to have good rhythm in your swing. Uh, slow rhythm. Ers had, Els had sloop, super slow rhythm, but he went back at a good pace, set it for about 10 years, and then went. Um, uh, young, current tour star, same thing. I'm not a real fan of the pause at the top, because that's hard for most amateurs like Young and, and uh, Matsuyama. But the soup and like Im and Morikawa, they start slow, but they learn that doesn't work and they speed up. Okay, that's hard to do as well. Start off slow and then speed up. Best thing to do, get a metronome, get um, John Novosel's uh, Tour Tempo app, learn to swing in rhythm, slow rhythm, not slow tempo. And I'll show you the difference. Okay, so this is the 
slow, smooth tempo that I see every day. Now that rhythm was garbage. And oh, I felt really quick on that one. And then what everybody does is they slow down the backswing even more and it causes even more rush. So, you know, I had, uh, you know, the club head speed didn't show up for some reason. Let's try that again. So that looks terrible, okay? But my only other choice would be to swing in rhythm with the same slow backswing. That ball went nowhere. It was smooth, but it went nowhere. Whereas, if you have a fast tempo and a smooth rhythm, then you get a bunch of club head speed. So, the slow backswing wrecks your rhythm. Your rhythm is what you want to work on. All right. Didn't think I was going to hit any balls. Those are my first ones of the day. All right. Let's see what we got else in here. Is there a uh, Cal Club Love 19? Is there a constant theme for low heel iron shots? Yes. Um, low heel iron shots always have some kind of poor wrist movement. Now, is the poor wrist movement the root cause? Not always. But low heel iron shots always have an element of poor wrist movement. Mo ah, English please. Poor wrist movements. Okay. Excellent. Be Lost connection there for a second. Beyond golf one, when the left hip goes back, does the pressure move from the toes to the heel? Yes. All right. That's a really good question. As you're approaching the top and your weight starts to move to the left, when your right hip's getting behind you, you're gonna feel the pressure moving from your right side to your left toes. Then when you fire the left hip, then it goes to the heel. And when someone does it really well with a whole lot of speed and power, you'll see that left foot completely come off the ground and move around and to the left. Trying to do that on purpose without the eight things that lead up to that is a way to hit the ball terrible. But you see a lot of the long hitters, their foot comes up and moves. And that's from them doing what I'm discussing really, really well. Yeah, AMG, AMG says to speed up also. Really smart guys, good friends of mine. Okay. Been working on fixing over the top in my downswing and top the ball more when I try to shallow the club. It feels like I'm releasing the club too late. Any suggestions? J.M. Phelps won. Okay, There's a, I would be more than happy to offer you a suggestion, but without seeing your swing, there's a really good chance I could be giving you terrible information and make you worse. Um, you've got to find out the root cause of why this is happening. And, and address that. How long do you keep the face looking at the ball in the backswing? Personal, okay, you'll get opinions from excellent instructors that will disagree with me here. This is from Heck I. I. I'm not a big fan of, of the feel of keeping the face looking at the ball in the backswing. Um, that causes, to me, that causes some hip sway, some poor rotation of the arms, late wrist hinge. I've just seen that feel become too problematic. So a lot of good players make that work. A lot of good instructors teach that and make it work. I happen to be of the opinion that's not a good idea. Uh, R. Ryan 9 
struggling with low toe strikes and a slightly left swing path. Any ideas? Like I said before about the low heel strikes, um, there are likely other elements involved, but a late shift to the left side. The whole idea that you shift to the right in the backswing and you shift to the left in the downswing, that's not what good players do. If you do that, you're going to get left late, all right? And you may have another issue to in your swing, but undoubtedly getting left late is part of the problem. Okay. Uh... Okay, D-A-K, Dak, Dak Atkinson. That's probably what that is, I'm guessing. I've shortened my backswing, but hands are still way behind my right thigh at P6, and I'm casting, hitting hooks, pushes. How can I get the hands more forward? Great question. Let me demonstrate a couple things over here. Okay, so people will cast stall flip and they'll be taught oh fire your body more hold the angles do this and that and the other okay you're going to hit it worse if you do that so what you he just described was his hands are behind his body at p6 even with a short swing here's the problem if you're in this position you must cast stall flip or some combination of those three or the club's never going to get to the golf ball all right, and it doesn't matter how much you shorten your swing. This issue here is the arms accelerating way too late. I just put up a video on this Instagram this week. The time frame between when the hips um, accelerate and the torso accelerates, 10 milliseconds. Between when the torso accelerates, the thorax accelerates, and the left arm and el right elbow accelerate 10 more milliseconds. So the distance, the distance, ah, the difference in time between when the hips fire and when the arms fire is 20 milliseconds. The a blink of an eye is 333 milliseconds. Here's how long 20 milliseconds is in the swing. So I'm up at the top, first move of the hips. This is about how much movement there is in 20 milliseconds after the first move of the hips. I barely moved. So there's a reason why you've got Jack Nicholas saying, keep your back to the target for as long as you can. Justin Rose saying, feel like you stay closed and come all the way down to here. And why you hear Tiger say, I have to feel like I start with my arms or my hips get way out in front. I'd say right now, it's probably a low estimate, but 90% of golfers over the handicap of zero accelerate their arms late. And it is physically impossible to start. Everyone says, but Monty, the swing, you can't start with your arms. The swing is from the ground up. I understand that. It is physically impossible to start the swing with your arms. It's impossible. You can't do it. Um, all the people who say, oh, I start the swing with my arms and I'm over the top and I don't get to my, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's a false feeling. Here are the two things that are happening when people think they're starting the swing with their arms or they're very armsy or whatnot. Number one is they're getting to the top. Their arms and hands accelerate really, really late and they spin their shoulders. Oh, look at how armsy you are there. My arms didn't move an inch in relation to my chest. Your chest has to stay closed as your hips are turning, and that allows the arms to come down the chest and get to here. The other one is, is the one that you're discussing. Your arms fired late, you're in this position, the body stalls, the arms take over. It both feels and looks like you're all arms. Use the body more, use the body more, that's going to make it worse. So... You have to find some feel where you can get. So the drill that I have people do is I say, take a backswing. This is the Justin Rose drill. Come all the way down to hands in front of the right thigh. 
stop again, and if you recock the arms, you're just going to do this again. And from here, just turn and look at what a good impact I have. Got to feel like the arm starts sooner. Okay. Lots of good questions here. Is it possible to start the recentering your mass or getting the left side too early when doing the pressure shift? Yes. Um, but it's very hard if you have a proper and if you move the club head first, your hands second, and your arms third, that creates a shift into the right side. So here, look, let me show you this. So look, if you notice, if I just, if I take my arms, hands, and the club, and I move them as quickly as possible to here, this is a move you'll see in all the World Long Driving Championships. Watch the pressure go into my right foot. You can see that force is pulling me over here. So if your first move off the ball is to move your hips and go straight into the left side, this hasn't moved, so yes. But if you go here, you can start going left right then. That's kind of what DeChambeau does. All right. Just going through the questions. Okay, another awesome question. Let me get a little drink here. I've got, I had Chipotle. I should get a, a, a endorsement for that. Uh, watermelon limeade. I'm a sucker. X-factor stretch in transition versus left arm off the chest first move. How are these combined optimally? Such a good question. Very, very complicated technical question, but excellent nonetheless. Um, so this is, this is why it's super important. The X-factor stretch is created by the early shift to the left. So I always say, the shift to the left is the last move of the backswing versus the first move of the downswing. If you do that right, you're gonna get X-factor stretch most of the time. Now, X-factor stretch, for those of you that don't know it, is not X-factor. X-factor was the nonsense that's been around for 30 years where you limit the hip turn to maximize how much more the shoulders turn than the hips turn. That's garbage. X-factor stretch is when the hips and shoulders separate in transition, okay? Then the second thing, we see almost universally in elite golfers, by the time the swing gets to left arm parallel and the downswing, the left arm is accelerating away from the chest. And the simple fact is, and the guy that you can watch and learn how to do this is Rory McIlroy. His chest does not turn. It, it, I'm, that's why he hits the ball so far. He turns his hips a good 30 degrees and drops his arms maybe this much before his shoulders start to turn. It's incredible. So Golf Punk 85, to answer your question, the longer you keep your chest closed and stay in left tilt, that creates the big X-factor stretch and allows the left arm to accelerate away from the chest. If you try to fire your chest open super fast, you're gonna get no X-factor stretch and you're gonna pin your left arm to your chest. I, I hope that was a good, most times demonstrating something is better than saying it. In this particular case, saying it is a little bit more descriptive, so, there you go, my friend. I hope that made some sense to you. Um, you can essentially kill two birds with one stone when you don't open your chest, your thorax, torso, whatever, when you don't open it up too early. Great question.
Let's see, who's next here? Great questions, by the way. What do you think about tipping the club at the start of the downswing? I've been doing it lately and it's changed my game. Okay, so I'm assuming that you mean tipping it, shallowing it this way. I love it. As long as you don't cheat and do it with the right shoulder. So let me, let me demonstrate that. This is one you need to see. So I'm assuming when you say tipping the shaft, you mean you're getting up to the top and going like this, tipping it this way versus yanking it that way. That's excellent. But it's a straightening of the elbow and a wrist move, okay? See how I'm tipping the shaft and getting it to work along my right forearm as my hips rotate. That's the correct way. Make sure you're not tipping it by dropping the right shoulder. Look, look at all the bad that's there. The club face is wide open. The hips are thrusting toward the ball. Now essentially all I've got is a big block or a snap hook. So you gotta be careful that you tip it this way by unloading the wrist and the right elbow and not by dropping the right shoulder. Okay, so in my video, the no turn cast, I absolutely discuss that move you're talking about, the Malaska move, as people like to call it. Um, to me, that's the second wrist movement of the downswing. So here are the way the wrists work. I'll do this out in front of the camera. <laughs> okay, so Mike says you need to do this, all right? And I think that's a great concept to get you out of that move, which is what a lot of golfers do. But, it, so look, here are the movements we need to discuss. So, hinging is radial deviation. What's called casting is ulnar deviation, okay? Then we've got the lead wrist. Bowing is flexing, uh, cupping is extending, okay? So, this is not my opinion, this was measured. They measured 150 tour players five, six, eight years ago, I don't remember exactly when, and 149 out of 150 are going this way from shaft parallel to shaft parallel. This way, everything you're told not to do. The only one that's going this way through impact was Daniel Berger, whose swing is obviously functional, but a little different. So, while I understand what Mike is saying, I believe that's the second move down. You should be doing that move from here to there, not from the top. Because a lot of amateurs, now, you're having great success with it, and I like it. Because if you're this guy, going like this is going to be excellent from the top. But in my opinion, you have to go this way first, then that way. Because one of the big measurements they've had with a one-on-one, -on -one, this kind of lag has proven to be useless. There's no correlation. But the lag that's important is, is when the shaft is parallel to the ground, the more the club head is behind the hands, the more club head speed you have the potential to create, and the more passive squaring of the club you can get. Okay? But, but so, in my opinion, Mike's discussion is from here to here. You got to go this way first, then you do the Malaska move. So I like it. I'm for it. I'd like to see it happen a little bit later than he does. Do you like banking of the right foot, hook, foot to help stay in tilt and avoid spin out? I was actually having that discussion with someone earlier today. I think there are better ways of doing it. Um, people who try to bank the right foot tend to fire their right hip and knee out too early, um, which as we've already learned is not ideal. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't want to sit here and say it's never good or that it's wrong, 
because there are some people that have had good. It's just, in my opinion, it's not the, the easiest way to do it. Okay, your video on Instagram where you showed two different swings. The smoother swing was faster than the quick swing looking swing. Can you explain how that works? Absolutely. Um, the smoother swing was not smooth at all. Um, that was um, a, an efficient swing. The quick swing was me just being herky-jerky and just spinning my body really fast. There's a myth out there that the faster you spin your hips and shoulders, the farther you hit the ball. Not the case. Uh, club head speed and proper strikes come from proper sweet sequencing of all the body parts. And so, you know, if you ask Fred Couples and Ernie Els, oh my God, your guy swings so smooth, I bet you did 50 yards farther, they'll laugh at you and say, why would I swing smooth at a driver? I know, because I've asked both of them personally. Um, people, both in watching other people's golf swings and feeling of their own, um, wasted motion feels faster and more powerful but, but an efficient motion feels more effortless. So whenever someone sees my winning drive or my second place drive from the World Long Driving Championships back in the early 90s, and they're like, there's no way you could be able to compete today because that wasn't more than 125 miles an hour. And I'm like, how am I going to win the World Championship at any age, at any in any era, swinging 125? It was probably 145 to 150. I know that because even the devices we used in those days, they weren't that accurate. But I was able to swing almost 140 when I was 48 years old. So when I was 25, I was probably, if not at 150 or over it, pretty dang close to it. But when you look at those swings, it really doesn't look like I'm swinging over 120 or 125. Today, when I put my swing up on, on, on social media, and I'm like, yeah, this was a 122, 181 ball speed, and people are like, you're such a liar, you're so full of crap, you're a, you know, a fat old man, and there's no way you're swinging more than 105. Well, they're right about the fat old man thing, but you know, because I've learned to make a lot of my movements more efficient, it doesn't look like I'm swinging fast because the movements are cohesive. Whereas you see some guy swing out of his shoes and he bunts it out there 180, his movements are inefficient. Monty, thoughts on keeping the hands in front of the body and chest in the backswing? I, I get it, okay? And it's not altogether, about, this is from Golfing Policy 99. I get it. And I'm not altogether against it. You just have to be careful how you interpret it, all right? Most things in the golf swing are a parabolic curve. You've got the crappy movement here, and then when you do the opposite of the crappy movement, so like here's the casting that, that high handicappers do, this is holding lag, just as bad the other extreme. There's a point at the top of the curve in all movements in the swing that you're trying to get. So you don't want to suck your hands behind your body, but you also don't want them like way out in front over here. And the simple answer to the question is, is if you sequence the backswing correctly and you turn and tilt correctly, the hands will pretty much be where, where they're supposed to. But just be really careful with overdoing that one. <laughs> 